Hi everyone, today we're going to be unboxing an Inku Crate and I want to give a big thank you to Inku Crate who sent this to me for a free to review. And if you want to save $3 off your Inku Crate, make sure to use the code MARIE3 and the link in the description box below. Also, my kids made an Inku Crate video, so make sure to check it out when you're done watching. So the first item is this Sanrio themed Sakura ballpoint pen. So cute and so perfect for this season. All the Sanrio characters are dressed up in their traditional Japanese outfits and holding cherry blossoms. I love the Sumi Kokurashi design. I actually have a case that also has this ice cream design. I think it's one of my favorite uh, Sumi Kokurashi designs. So this is sort of a neoprene pencil case and has an ice cream theme. I love this so much. They also included this dual tip highlighter. I really like this flat highlighter design. I think it's really portable and I always end up reaching for these over my fancier ones. And I also like how they have a gray pen on this tip because it's kind of a different color that you don't typically see. So I thought this eraser was really cute. I like the design on the cover. And I thought it was kind of whatever, but then when I unwrapped it, I found these little hearts in the center, which I think are so amazing. It's such a fun little surprise and detail on this. So I don't really have any pen pals right now, but I love getting these stationery sets. It kind of reminds me of uh, my life as a, an elementary school kid and in middle school I also wrote letters to my friends using snail mail. Maybe one day when my kids go to summer camp, I can write them letters on this cute paper. And I love how this gold detail looks on the vellum envelope. It's so pretty. Early April is cherry blossom season. Where I live, all the blossoms have fallen off the trees and turned into leaves, but um, this is such a cute little postcard featuring the sakura blossoms and chipmunks. So this next item is really fun. It's this little washi sticker set. And the designs to me are kind of reminiscent of the 80s. But it's really cool because you can fold it up and take it with you, slip it in your notebook for journaling on the go.
so this last item I think is my favorite thing in this box these are flower stickers but they look like clear wax seals with gold flecks and really gorgeous dried flowers in them I don't know if the flowers in here are real but they are so pretty I can't wait to use these So now it's time for me to put some of my Inku Crate supplies to use and I'm going to be decorating my traveler's notebook for March and April using some of these supplies and some other things that I had on hand. So we were watching Turning Red when it first came out and we really loved that movie. I think my kids and I thought it was so hilarious. We've actually watched it more than once. And that movie made me think back to my own middle school experience and sort of reflect on it a little bit. So I thought that in this video I would just talk about it while I show you guys how I set up my notebook. And actually, I started decorating my March calendar in the middle of April, but I'm, I'm not the best at keeping up with calendars, but that's okay, right? I can still decorate it. Well, that's what I did. Um, so. When I was around 13 years old, my parents had been divorced for a while and my mom got remarried. So we moved an hour away from a city that I had pretty much lived in my entire life. Um, so about two months after I started middle school there, we packed up and we moved to a new city, which was about an hour away from where I grew up. and. My hometown where I grew up was a place that was really diverse, and if anything, Asians were the majority, not the minority, or that's how it became. I think now it's predominantly Asian, but when I was living there, it was very mixed in terms of racial composition, and so I never felt like a minority there. And, and then we moved to a city where pretty much everybody was white, and I think there may have been like three other Asians in my grade in the entire junior high school and it was a big junior high school and one of those Asian girls lived in my neighborhood and I was friends with her and she was Korean but she was adopted by a white family so you can kind of get the sense of you know the community there it was just, it was just a culture shock I guess so you know I had a lot of big changes that I had to adapt to a new stepfather, a new city, having to make new friends, and also going through puberty. So I was going through a time in my life where friends become more important. I think at, at that age, you sort of gravitate away from your family and you, you're finding your independence and figuring out who you are as a person. And you rely on your friends more, but I was moving away from my friends to a brand new school where I had to make new friends for pretty much the first time in my entire life so my kids have moved so many times we we lived in japan and then we moved to korea and then we moved to like another city in korea so i feel like my kids have changed schools almost every year up until we moved to the u.s and i feel kind of bad about that um but they're good at making friends because they had they had to do it over and over again so many times and i think um, you know, now I'm really kind of committed to staying in one place if I can so that they can have a more stable upbringing and stable friendships. But uh, by the time I had gone to junior high, I, I, I never changed schools before. Um, so I had to make all new friends. And luckily, I played basketball. And so I joined the basketball team. And that's how I made friends at the new school. And a few of my teammates... Um, became my friends in middle school so that i think if you're moving to a new place and you want to make friends one good way to do that is to join activities that you're interested in like sports or dance or maybe drama or music and then you'll also be able to meet people with similar interests to you um so i kind of think about this as i'm raising my girls and when i sign them up for dance class or sports it's sort of one of the considerations in the back of my mind because 
Not only is it good for like exercise and learning teamwork and having a good work ethic and working towards something, um, but also when they get to high school or middle school where things change, like friends that you thought you were friends with may not be friends with you anymore. Um, and it's not as easy to make friends when you get older as it is in elementary school. So. I think about that when I sign them up for these activities and I want them to have an interest that they can they can have later on, like develop passions in these areas. And I also want them to have a group of friends that they can feel like they belong to and have sort of some social group outside of school. Although I still want them to be very close with me, so I'm not looking forward to the day where they um, become more independent and like, you know, move away from me because I really enjoy my kids um friendship if you that's what you call it not really but um i just enjoy having them around and hanging out with them so i'm gonna be sad when they don't want to hang out with me anymore um but now i mean now that i'm a mom and i have my own family my perspective on friendship is really different i feel like friends just kind of come and go i've had so many different friends over my lifetime and i've been close with people for a couple of years and then moved on to other things or other friends and friendships really change a lot and so somebody who you are so close with at one point you know there's a good chance that that a few years down the road you may not be friends with them anymore especially if you move or um, go to grad school your life circumstances change and so I value my family so much more than I do friendship um, but I think in middle school it's common to have a different view and sort of value friendship more because that's where you are in your life. So bullying is another thing that happens in middle school and there was a girl who tried to bully me at that new school. She was kind of popular and she sat behind me and she was she started to kick my seat. Um, but I think when it comes to bullying, at least in person, I don't know how to deal with online bullying, but you have to confront that person right away and let them know that they can't push you around. So that's what I did. I I turned around and I looked at her straight in the eyes and I told her to stop. And she did. And she never did that again. And I think um, there's a lot of people that are really uncomfortable with eye contact. So if you stare at them directly in the eyes until they look away and you just keep staring at them until they feel really uncomfortable with that um, with that stare and silence and just stare at them until they look away from you and um, that's sort of a way to establish your dominance I think um, and so they'll know that they can't push you around so I guess uh, luckily I didn't have too bad of an experience in middle school with bullying but I know other kids who were bullied like they had their lunch money taken from them um, and then sometimes my kids ask me about bullying but I just give them that advice on how to stand up for themselves and like to stop things immediately so that and let people know that like you will not be pushed around I'm not really sure to say about cyberbullying though that seems really hard to deal with because people feel so much bolder when they're behind their computer screen or phone and they don't have direct contact with people. Um, I, I guess try to, I don't know, let me know in the comments if you guys have any thoughts on how the best way um, to deal with that is. But I would probably, you know, try to call those people out on what they're doing and report it to your teachers, your principals because that's probably against school policy. And then also just um, try to build up your kid's self-confidence so that, you know, they're, they're not as affected by that as they, as they would be if they, they were not that confident. But I think it's probably really hard. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And I want to give a big thank you and shout out to my Patreons and channel members. Ball reviewer Aaron V. Safarino, The Freedom Fairy, Cam Cam, Crafty Avino, Danielle, Sanyo, Catherine, Pigas, and Famina. Thank you guys so much, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.